Okay, Gary, we got just about everything set up here. Uh, temperature gauge, oil pressure gauge, battery is in, timing lights ready to go. I got a fan on you. Now we're going to fire it up, we're going to kick it around a little bit and uh, jack it up to about 2,000 and back down to about 800 then back up to 2,000, 2,200, something like that. We're going to cycle it a few times. Um, I'll try and get you some shots. It's tricky um, trying to do everything, time it and, and, and get the camera working and stuff like that. But I'll set the camera up the best I can. Uh, we'll fire this guy up. And uh, it's going to be a little bit, you might, might see it uh, a, a little bit not smooth. And that's because I'm just sitting on a jack back here. I don't have a transmission on this one. Usually um, I put a cross member in here and I got some rubber mounts on the transmission and your engine mounts. Sometimes they just, they, they seem like they're, uh, they're not super smooth because you can hear it kind of vibrating on that uh, jack there. It's just a, a screw jack. Um, but uh, it is a, it, it's going to be fine. Um, like I say, without the transmission, it's hard to keep it. Uh, so let's give it hell, see what happens. Okay, Gary, uh, I've got about 35 minutes of uh, break-in time on this. Uh, timing is set. I don't know if you'll be able to see down in there, but I got that marked for you down there. Um, those two white marks there. Top dead center and five before. I got you set to five before on your timing. You shouldn't need to adjust that. Uh, if you need to, you can, but you shouldn't need to. Uh, now the carburetor is set up as I have it running on a test stand. When you put your air horn on there and you go to your air cleaner and stuff, uh, you're going to change the air fuel mixture a little bit. There's your air fuel mixture screw. Right there. We're at one and a half turns right now and we're at about a 725 uh, idle. It's hard. It's idle without everything hooked up, but, but we're real close. You may need to adjust your pictures come just a hair once you get everything hooked up. Uh, the flywheel is resurfaced, the clutch is on there, pilot bushing is in there. Uh, this is your new starter, uh, again high torque starter. Uh, they're just, they're super reliable and I've had some trouble with rebuilding originals. They're, they're just so old and I've had some trouble and I've, I've gotten stuck and uh, I, I don't care for that. 
Now, just on the hot wire to fire this guy up, I jumped to uh, the, the solenoid wire. That's your solenoid wire up there, okay? And uh, I just got a battery cable to it and just an old foot starter to start this up. But this is what this is what you'll bring your 12 volts to. Uh, you'll excite the uh, the solenoid, and uh, and that starter motor will, will work perfect. Um, now this is my startup bell housing. That's not coming with the engine. Uh, starter will be there, and uh, this this stays here. So uh, I, I hope you got one. If you don't, let me know. And. Uh, here I think you can see the floor there's no leaks whatsoever on this I did spill a bunch of water when I was throwing the radiator uh, no oil leaks uh, 40 to 45 pounds at 2,000 rpm and uh, I idled it down to about 600 and we still have about 22 pounds of oil pressure at 600 rpm which is fantastic uh, please be sure that you have a good radiator when you fire this engine up. Um, too many people think that their radiators are good. Uh, they spend a lot of money on an engine and they overheat it. Um, so make sure that your radiator is good and can support this engine okay. You are running, I just shut this off so the temperature is up a little bit, but you're running rock solid at 170. Okay, I got a one uh, 165 fail-safe thermostat in there for you and uh, it runs perfect at 170 and it will continue to do so as long as you put a good radiator in there. Um, please make sure that's the case. Vertronics coil, Vertronics in the distributor. Uh, you have to do nothing with that at all. Uh, it's not like points or anything where you got to adjust anything. I am going to change the oil. You're going to get a new filter. I'm going to fill you up with uh, Shell Rotella 1540 and it will come down to you uh, topped off with oil and uh, I would run it probably oh 500 miles or so and then change it again. Uh, one thing I don't want you to do is just have the engine sitting in your chassis and idle it. You know, like if your buddies come over, don't just idle it and, and let it sit like that for a half an hour. Um, first little bit of an engine's life is critical. So this needs to be under load uh, for best braking. Um, like I say, I did about 35 minutes at high RPM. Cam is well broken in. You don't have to worry about wiping the cam out or anything like that. But just don't idle it for long periods of time. Uh, you know, obviously fire it up if you want to hear it run, but don't let it idle for long periods of time. Uh, when you get it in your Jeep, take it out, run around the neighborhood 25, 35, 40 miles an hour. Not one constant speed, but make sure you vary the speed quite a bit. Um, we want to give this the best chance of being a long life engine. Um, most of my engines are out there running. Some of them don't make the grade, and uh, it ran 
perfect here and it'll run perfect for you. You just gotta keep up with things. Now your valves are set. And like I say on new engines I set the valve just a hair loose. So if the hair will be back, uh um, don't worry about it. Your first 500 mile um, check up. Be good. Then you'll be good for a very long time. Then you'll be looking at maybe 12,000 miles before you have to adjust it again. Or, or even longer. It just depends on you. Uh, critical things. Don't idle it. And when you get it, put it under load. Light load at first. Just around town. No steep hills you know, to begin with. And then gradually increase your driving, your speed. Uh, hills and stuff like that and put a little bit of load on it and a little bit more load a little bit more load and uh, Take care of it from day one. It'll last forever Okay, I'm gonna get busy uh, changing the oil now and uh, I'll be back with you in just a little bit Okay, Gary just uh, changing your oil here uh, This is what I recommend and I like to use in all my engines shell rotella uh, T4 15W40 and I like Wix filters I use them pretty much exclusively and that's what I'm putting back on your engine 51050 is the number it'll be on the filter uh, I would recommend you stick with Wix it's, uh, it's probably the best filter out there and uh, that's your oil like I say this one will be good for the first 500 and then uh, change it out. Okay Gary, oil has changed. Uh, ran it again for another uh, 20 minutes or so. Carburetor adjusted perfectly. Uh, Temperature is holding perfectly. Oil pressure is perfect. And um, I'm just draining. The, uh, I just ran it on water. 50-50 um, mix for you of uh, antifreeze and water. And, and you'll be all set. And like I said, make sure you have a good radiator. Uh, I am going to get this off the stand. I'm going to get it palletized for you and ready to go. Uh, I'm going to put in some information on the carburetor. Uh, I have these carburetors bit, built by um, a guy. And um, I'm going to put his information in there in case anything happens to the carburetor. You can talk to him directly. Um, nothing ever goes wrong with them. I'm just putting the um, the carb information in there for you. Uh, everything else was done here in the shop, and the motor's running perfectly. Uh, you've got a new distributor and a new starter, so you should have a long life with both of those uh, and a brand new clutch. So, uh, like I said, I'll get this off the stand. I've got uh, three more engines to start up over the next few days. So I will get this off the stand on a pallet and uh, we'll figure out some freight down to you. And uh, that's all I got for you today. Gary, if you have any questions, just get a hold of me. And um, the next F head going on this stand uh, is one that I built for a customer and then they, I don't know what happened, they got sick or the Jeep, something happened. I, I'm not exactly sure what happened, uh, but I have another F head that's going on here next. If anybody needs an F head, the very next one on here will be for sale. And um, get with me right away if you uh, think you need an F head. Uh, and then I got Mark's L head ready to go as well. So, a lot of engines going on the stand. And uh, that's all I have for you today. Thanks for watching, everybody. And uh, I will catch everybody on the next video.